Welcome to Pin the Q Productions. If you are interested in the culture of the fire service and keeping tradition alive, you have come to the right place. Now sit back and relax with your brothers and sisters and enjoy the show. Be sure to like and subscribe on all social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. For more information on Pin the Q Productions, visit www.pintheq.com. Hey everyone, welcome back to Pin the Q Podcast in Pennsylvania this time, Dixon City, Pennsylvania to be uh, exact. We're here with someone that uh, we're going to talk to shortly, someone you may know or may not know because he told me he doesn't like to be on video, but he's on video right now. I'm here. First thing I noticed about this uh, area is the mountains, and I was all excited, and you know, I'm looking at the horizon, and we're looking at the mountains, and I'm like, man, that looks really awesome. What did you say to me? That's a garbage dump. That's a garbage dump. <laughs> So it just goes to show you that what you see isn't always what you get. It is picturesque, but it is indeed a garbage jump. It was indeed a garbage jump you were looking at. Yeah. So in this cool area, um, went to, to meet you, and one of the cool things is we're going to talk about is Gold Leaf Furnace. Okay. All right, we're excited to talk about that. But first, before we get into all of that, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell about who you are. My name is Will Belinsky. I'm from Dixon City, Pennsylvania. We are a suburb of Scranton, Pennsylvania. Cue the... Uh, the office, the now, office theme there. Yeah, if I wasn't, if I wouldn't get sued, I would have put the <laughs> office theme on right now. Maybe a picture of Dwight, like we put Dwight here or something. But yes, yeah, we don't have the rights to that. No. Um, so uh, we're outside of the city of Scranton, uh, volunteer fire department um, in a small town. Uh, as we like to say, small town, big problems. Mm-hmm. Uh, four and a half square miles, but within that area, we're dealing with uh, U.S. Route Six, uh, our main avenue, uh, large retail establishments, uh, large restaurant chains, and with growth and progress brings issues. Yeah, fire department. Issues and challenges for, yeah, for a you. A lot of challenges, especially when you're a volunteer. Right. Now, this this house, um, super clean. I, I see you guys take a lot of pride in this, in this house, mm-hmm. and I noticed that, not because it's clean, but that's one part of the pride, but the other part was, you know, the murals on the walls, and one of the things I, I thought was really, really cool was the fact that this was literally built here. Yes. So, uh, truck here behind you, a 1988 American the France Century Series pumper, as we call it here. Uh, some place calls it an engine, some place calls it a wagon, but it was built here in Dunmore, Pennsylvania, right next door to Dixon City. Uh, some of the members worked there at the time it was being built. Uh, a lot of the memberships had their hand in seeing it built and what went into this truck and how it was set up. So it's somewhat of the pride of the company. Built here locally, stayed local still in service uh, things a battleship it's really awesome that you know it's a huge part of the history here but the guys that literally built this mm-hmm. that's awesome and not so many places can say that unless they built like a pickup truck or something in the back of the firehouse <laughs> you know this this is pretty unique and then still in service still ready still to go in service yeah it's the front line engine you know right behind the ladder that's awesome it brings the water that's good i mean it's it's pretty cool it's a pretty cool piece so Tell me a little bit about this area. Tell me, you know, demographics, what type of fire load you have here. Um, we ha- usually have a – it's nice because uh, Dixon City is split up. Uh, we are a valley-type setting uh, between, you said, the two mountains, and the lower part of uh, the town is residential. So you have a, a residential apartment, um, some commercial set up. Uh, northern part of town, uh, higher up on the hill, or as we say – uh, of the mountain is U.S. Route 6. So that's a large commercial uh, development, restaurants, uh, stores, malls, strip malls, uh, that kind of stuff. So you're dealing with uh, a lot of vehicle crashes, uh, commercial fire alarm, commercial fire, uh, things about 
that nature, vehicle fire, residential fire, you know, apartment fires. It's so you go from your big box stores to your, you know, rural areas. So you, you guys have a little bit of everything here. A little bit of everything. Yeah. And that, that diversity is pretty good about the fire company because it keeps people motivated, keeps people busy and active. Uh, while we were here setting up, one of the runs you got was a, you know, auto versus pedestrian, which turned out to be nothing, right? Right. Person but, got bumped by a car and they wanted a report. That's what I call it. Sorry. Well, you got dispatched always, and, that, and that's the thing is that you guys, you know, are staying busy, which, which is a good thing. So how did this whole thing start for you? Well, it would start with my father. My father was a, uh, or it still is, a volunteer fireman here. Uh, so your dad's here? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Started back in the 70s, uh, which was a big time for volunteer fire departments across the nation and here in Pennsylvania, and everybody volunteered. You helped out your community. It's, as I call it, it's a, it's a dying breed. Um, with training that's uh, today and, and what you need to have, uh, what you should have, and yet you want to help your uh, community, but yet you're trying to balance work, your family. And some people working two, two jobs. It's tough. Just to support and, and I family. give a lot of credit to, to guys who do this. You know, it's not easy. Um, it's not for everyone, but it, it's, it's something that needs to be done, and if not, you're going to pay for it. And where are you going to get that money from? People don't realize that. So as a child, obviously, you watch your father on the fire department. When would you say that spark happened for you? At what age do you remember? It, it probably started when I was younger, um, but I really didn't step into it uh, until around 99, 2000. Um, I had my own interests. Um, I searched those out. I was kind of around the fire department, but I never took into it. Uh, until about that time. So it's so, much different than Chase. Much different than Chase. Um, Chase is very interested, more so than I was, um, and, and it's just fine. You know, I, I encourage it. You know, I encourage anybody who has an interest in your local fire department, if it's volunteer, ask what you can do. You know, help out the best you can. So about two, 99, 2000 is when you, when for you, for lack of better words, a spark was ignited, right? Right. That's when I joined here. Uh, that was my induction, I guess you would say, into starting here as a probationary member for that first year. I had to get my training, um, get all my certificates, and uh, move into the fire department up to firefighter. Uh, made it up to a rank of uh, drill master, is what we call it here. It was training instructor. Uh, didn't go further than that. Uh, took another job in emergency services and focused on that. So I still volunteer here and uh, still a firefighter here. But that's as far as I went and go into the upper ranks. What would you say um, for you starting out in, let's say, 99? So you started in 99. When, when you started there, did you have a different appreciation for your, fire, your father being a firefighter? Or was it, like, more when you had your first job? Um, you get a different sense of what it's all about. As a kid growing up and you see it and you hear it and, you know, you listen to uh, the scanner and the radio and the calls, you see uh, your dad going on the call. You, you hear it, but you don't know what's actually going on right. there on the scene inside the building. Um, it, it's it's not all uh, TV fire, as you see t- today. You know, you don't see your hand in front of your face, basically, at times. And it's, it's, it's amazing. Like, I've been through some training with some people, and the harsh reality is is they don't realize they're claustrophobic. They don't realize that you've got to operate in, you know, the dark and you know, got to use your other senses that you're not going to be able to see everything. And, right. and some people that turns them off and turns them away. Like, you know, and you got to train, you know, if you, if you can't do it, you know, you can't make that overcome that fear. Cause it is a fear. Let's face it. Well, you got to have that respect. And just what you said, you, you couldn't have said it better before you said it's not for everybody. Cause it's not for everybody. You know, a, a friend of ours, Bobby Eckert always says that, you know, it's job is not for everybody. It's, it's really true. It, you know, and you just brought that to light. Yeah, it, it is true. I mean, it, a lot of people think they can do it, but the reality is, is until you're actually doing it and you're put in that position and you're relying on the training that you have to kick in, and if you don't keep up with that, it's like anything else, your skills will diminish. Oh, yeah, it's definitely a perishable skill yeah. without without question. It's not something you can just pick up and say, oh, I'm going to try that again today. you got to keep at it. And if you don't, you're going to, you know, you're going to flounder. You're going to have issues and you're going to, you know, look like a, jackass i guess you would say yeah and the cool thing is it's youtube so you don't have to edit it out you can say whatever you, you can say whatever you want 
Well, tell me what it's like and you know, tell some more viewers what it's like because we have a lot of people who watch the show that um, are in your situation where you have a son that's you know following your step, footsteps in more ways than one, which we're going to talk about. But um, tell me what it's like for you to have him around the firehouse with you. Um, it's pretty neat. It, it, it's fun at times because you get to see him grow. You get to see him as an individual um, come from being a child, starting to learn into adolescence, being into a teenager, he gets to learn uh, some diversity. He gets to learn how to deal with Lots people. Lots of diversity. Right. <laughs> he gets to learn how to deal with people. Right. Different beliefs, different culture, different ideas, and how you manage that. Mm-hmm. You know, how do you, you know, there's going to be people you get along with, there's going to be people you don't get along with, there's going to be people you like and you don't like, and it's in every job, whether it's volunteer or, or, or a paid job, wherever, and you've got to learn how to navigate those skills as a person. So I, I enjoy that. I enjoy him seeing him with the banter that happens in the firehouse and, you know, we pick on each other, I guess you call it, or we give each other, you know, a tough time, but that's, that's life. How yeah. do you deal with that? You know, I'm, I'm okay with that. You know, as he's learning how to navigate those waters, right. that's, that's life. And, and listen, that's, that's part of the culture. You know, that's right. part of what this is all, all about, you know, and that, and that, you know, a little, it gives you a sense of home. When that goes on, when that doesn't go on, then you got to worry a little bit. Like, what's that's what's what right? I always tell people? Yeah. If you come in and you get the high end buy, yeah, something's wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or someone he goes, hey, he's a good guy. Right. If someone says you're a good guy, it, you, that means they're like a really bad fireman. Yeah. <laughs> he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. What can I, what can I say? He's a nice guy. You know, yeah. If you come through the door and you know somebody starts picking on you, or they throw a jab at you, or, you know, yeah. you know, you, you posted something on social media this morning, and they're just waiting to. Oh yeah, bang yeah, 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 you on yeah, yeah. it, pin you on it. Like there's there's guys that this morning there was something I put up and they they were waiting. Like in there, <laughs> it's on there and they, it was like, here we go, we're gonna start. Yeah, and I love it. You know, it's all about you know the fun and, and you gotta have fun with it. You know, you gotta have thick skin. It'll create thick skin. Yes. It, you know, it'll show you take things seriously. What you don't, and there's a time when you'll be pulled aside and said, hey, don't do that. Don't do this. Especially now because it's you know it's way different than it used to be. You know, so there there is a fine line that you have to you have to tread lately. You know, unfortunately, yeah, social media is a big thing. Oh Things yeah, we used to say and do. Thank God there wasn't cameras when I was a kid. That's all. I yeah, used. social media. Yeah, a lot of us wouldn't be around <laughs> <laughs> with social media back then. Uh-huh. But but that's good that you know you got to see you get to see that firsthand. And something you know, and there's a lot of people in your position out there that are you know they have their sons or daughters that are like really ingrained into what's going on and kind of follow you around the firehouse and, and want to follow dad, which is which is cool. He's going to make his own path, his own footsteps. I'm not forcing him into doing anything he doesn't want to do. Uh, if he decides it's not for him, that's great. That's not for you. I'm okay with that. You don't have to do what I do. You don't have to do what your grandfather did. You don't right. have to do what your uncles, your cousins, whomever. It, that doesn't matter to me. You find your path. You, you know, whatever makes you happy, go for it, kid. You know, look, world's open. And it sounds like, it really sounds that's what happened to you and your father. It didn't sound like your father pressured you to get involved in fire service because you didn't until later in life. Right. So no, Dad didn't pressure me. I think he always wanted me to, but he never pressured me. Like he kept me around it. You know, you'd come down here if there was nothing going on. You'd come help out at at a picnic or a barbecue, whatever, to raise some funds for the department. And he got to be around the guys, and you liked that. You know what I mean? He he liked that. He liked seeing the interaction again. Same thing. I like for my son <coughs> that a different interaction with different ages, different demographics, different people, and how is he going to react to that? Because at first I was somewhat of a shy kid when I was younger. You know, it was tough for me at times to maybe look someone in the eye and have that conversation one on one because you're young. You, you don't know, but you've got to get through that and have your dad sit there and say, hey, that guy was trying to talk to you. You know, that could right. have been did a job realize, interview. That could yeah. have been, like, did you realize, like, you didn't shake his hand? Did you realize you didn't look him in the eye? Did you re- and those are the little things that, you realize later in life that mean a lot to some people right and you got to break out of that shell you, you got to grow as a person and you can do that within the fire department you know there's guys here that will break you out of your shell and there's guys here that were like oh, i don't want to deal with that kid he doesn't want to mm-hmm. you know but you got to learn who those people are that's that's what i mean those early developments at his age of 13 you know th- he's developing those skills at the firehouse you know and, and mm-hmm. if he's not here I mean, you and it, listen i this happens all over you know, kids that, including myself, I started at 14. So I know when I started at 14, I wasn't the same person as I was now. You know, you develop those skills. And I think that I probably was successful early in life with interviews and talking to people. And, and, and you know, of course, we didn't have social media back then. Right. And my face wasn't buried in the phone. Um, but again, that's one of the nice things about the firehouse is 
this allows you to be involved in something and doing something where your face isn't buried in a phone. You're not playing, you know, right. PlayStation in your basement for five hours. I mean, this is something you can do. Right. There's something you can do. You're here to help your community. People aren't asking you to come there because they they really want you there. They're calling you there because they have a problem. Right. They need someone to help resolve it, help them, and and move through it, and whatever it is. And Absolutely. There's all, all the different avenues. And, uh, you know, it's not like... They're looking to, you know, hey, I want the fire department in my house. You really, you don't. If you're calling them, something's wrong. And two, they want to have that confidence that they can deal with that person to get whatever the problem is resolved and move forward. And that's good. And that's a part, all part of that building block that this is. And that's, it's really good to see. And I, I love talking to guys like you that, you know, the, your father was a firefighter and then you became a firefighter. And now your son, you know, all these generations of firefighters, it's so great to see, you know. And it's good to see at least that part of the fire service. That part of the tradition is still going. Yeah, it's still going, and, but it's not like it used to be. No, definitely not. It, you know, the numbers have dwindled from mm-hmm. what used to be a membership here. Uh, guys come in. Uh, there's been many guys that have come through the house here, as we call it, and moved on to career opportunities. Washington, D.C., uh, city of Scranton, uh, Wilkes-Barre, another county, you know, that has full-time paid firefighters. And they move on. You right. know, they get their feet wet, they get their experience, get their legs under them, and decide, is this for me? This is what I want to do with the rest of my life. And, you know, you don't want to be a volunteer. Yeah, you want to make a little coin at it, you know. So it's great having those guys come in, but it, it sucks on the other hand because they move on. Right. So, well, Have you retained anybody that went on to be in the career house but stayed volunteering as well? There are some guys that do that, and, and they come back and, you know, but that's that's the issue. The, again, same thing. So now you're volunteering. You're tied up into full-time job, family, mm-hmm. and everything else that comes on with that. So then taking on, you know, the volunteers, it's not as easy for them. But, you know, be thankful when they're here and they help. Any other, anything you can do, any other hand you can lead. You know, and, and sometimes they come back with, hey, here's what we do down in, you know, Washington. You know, maybe we can use this set up here. And they teach you something. You right. know, it's always the ability to learn. Yeah. The biggest thing to I say to the demise of anything is we've always done it that way. But then on the other hand, it's we always hate change. So you got <laughs> well, to pick the battle. Yeah, so. what are the two things firemen hate the most? Well, the way things are and change. And change. So, <laughs> and it's very true because, yeah. you know, you look at things as, you know, oh, maybe that hose load is different. Like our hose load is one way and somebody else is not the same, but right. it works for us. And maybe it doesn't work for you, but... This is what, how we do it. As, as long I always say, as long as a company is willing to look at options, you know, you may you may stick with what you have, but at least you're willing to keep your eyes open and see what other people are doing and look at different options. Mm-hmm. That's a good thing. You know, when you're closed off, this is the way we do it, and we're only going to do it this way, and that, that always leads to failure. You know, it's unless what you're doing is awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you know, like anything else, no fire is the same. Yep. It's always going to be an ever-changing animal. Absolutely. And nothing is cookie cutter to say, well, you know, it's going to be a two-story wood frame house and it's going to go this way and that way and then we're going to put the fire on. That could change on you in a minute depending on weather conditions, fire load. Every, and next thing you know, your your ass is over elbows trying to get back out the door because now it's rolling over your head and you didn't, well, I didn't want to go that way. It wasn't way. supposed to happen. Yeah, that was, didn't, that's <laughs> the way I train. It wasn't supposed to do that. That's life. Yeah, it, absolutely. Know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to humble you. Absolutely. That is definitely true. So, yeah, the fire service um, is volunteer, like you said, and and, uh, and you got your son involved, which is awesome. But there's something else pretty cool that you do outside of being a firefighter, and that is apparently you're pretty you're talented. You're an artist or something. <laughs> well, I'm not a paid artist. Maybe a starving artist. Uh, <laughs> so tell me how that got started for you. Uh, and- I started painting helmet shields, and um, actually the fire chief here, uh, I believe it started with him, uh, Matt. Uh, one day came to me and said, hey, I'm, I made it to lieutenant, and I want to do something different. And I was I always putzing around with stuff here at the firehouse and putting uh, vinyl letters and, and striping on trucks and stuff. And he said, how can you paint me a, a lieutenant shield? I said, yeah, I'll give it a shot. I got, you know, well, how hard can it be? So, you know, a couple of brushes later and some model paints, that's where we started. And, you know, figured we'd try this out. And... Uh, it came out decent. You know, you look back at it now and I kind of laugh like, wow, you know. Um, but it actually, I went to my grandfather. And my grandfather was a sign painter. Hmm. And old school hand lettering um, started actually down in Philadelphia. Um, partly that's where my family started. He was hanging off the sides of buildings, painting like, you know, the side of a brick building when 
you know, with cigarette ads and uh, alcohol crazy. ads and everything else. That's crazy. On the side of a building. Um, so that's where he started. And I said, you know what? I need to learn the skill, you know, see if I have it. So I did do some signs with him. I did learn. What was that like for you? Uh, that was uh, last time that I wish I had more of. So I learned from him, and I asked him one day about Gold Leaf because he actually did some fire trucks here. Um, and we're not talking about a vinyl. No. We're not talking about vinyl Gold Leaf that guys are, and guys and girls are this buying is, right now. This is real Gold Leaf. Right. Where this is, you know, he had this horse hair brush that he would rub through his hair to get the, the static and pick up the sheets of gold and then place it on the truck. And no kidding. Yeah, it, it was. Wow. You know, it was real old school. He was, he was old school. That's like, awesome. You know, even today, it's a little change how they do it now, and everybody has their own technique to do in gold leaf. But I asked him, and he was he was an older guy and a little rough, and like you know, he wasn't like you know, oh, grandpa, come here, give me a hug. It's like, what do you want to learn that for, kid? You know, <laughs> I'm like, well, I want to learn how to do it. I, here, I want to start maybe try on helmet shields and everything else. Okay, here's a book. Gave me a book. That's awesome. So I love that. I was like, Ugh, I gotta read a book. You know, yeah. so I did over time. And then I bring it back to him. I said, all right, here's the book back. And he said, okay. So then he started asking me questions from in the book. And I answered them, you know, different techniques, things to do, terms and everything else, and how to do things. He's like, all right, now I'll teach you. Nice. And I'm like, why wouldn't you teach me before? I want to and see if you're like, committed. I wanted to see if you really want to do it because I wasn't going to waste my time. Mm-hmm. Gold is expensive. It's gold leaf. I'm not going to waste money on something you're going to, you know, not want to do in two weeks. Now, how awesome is that? So It's awesome. You know, and I got it, and that's respect. You know, I learned yep. it like, okay, you know, that's something I got to keep in my head. And yeah, I just don't. And people ask me, now, how do you do that? Well, I can explain it to you, but I'd have to show it to you. And do you really want to learn, or are you just interested in what it takes? So my son Chase came to me, and uh, I started Goldie Furnace Piece. I combined my father's love for the fire department with my grandfather's love for sign painting. I put it together into creating helmet shields. So not too long ago, my son came to me and said, hmm, I want an eye watch. I said, oh, that's nice. I got $400 to give you. You know, you really want an eye watch? You're going to have to earn it. I start cutting grass, start doing this. He's like, I want to learn how to paint helmet shields. Okay. Party must be like, yeah, <laughs> this is awesome. Okay. You know, let's see what that's all about. Right. So let's, here's what you got to do. And let's start with numbers and big numbers and maybe a word or two. And, you know, we'll get into gold leaf later, but. Let's walk grass for the very same reason before you could right. run. So yeah. let's walk before you could run. And uh, probably about three weeks and three and a half weeks later, he comes to me and says, I'm "Ready for my watch now?" I went, "What?" He's like, "Yeah, I, I got enough orders, and you know." I'm like, "Oh boy, here we go." So we're off and running. That's awesome. So and he got to see he got to see those the front you're making. Obviously, he took an interest in it. Yeah. He, he must have been watching what you're doing. So. Yeah, he's he's sitting right next to me. I mean, I, I operate out of my house. It's a little room and. Uh, he's got one half, I got the other. You know, I'm crazy uh, inundated with them. It, it's it's a fun thing to do. It, it takes me away from uh, the normal everyday life things and the stress. And it's, you know, you put on some music, you get into, you know, paint and drawing, designing. Um, next thing you know, you're, next next, thing you know, you're decompressing. Yeah, next you thing know. you know, it's like, yeah, whatever you're worried about went away for a while. Right. So you, you get into something else that takes you away from anything else you got going on. Unless we talk a lot about, you know, the fire service and having wanting to have hobbies and, other things because you have to have that there has to be an escape from from everyday stress and everyday life so for you it's obviously this yeah yeah it it, it is this um do you ever think you'd be where you're at right now as popular as you are with what you're doing i mean having orders and people reaching out to you and and the shields that you're doing the you know these fronts you're doing i mean some notable people are looking for these from you yeah i to me it's 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 just a hobby. It's it's something I'm good at, I guess you could say, and I don't see it as being, you know, fame or anything like that. Because if anything else, I, I I chalk it up to you know being Facebook famous. And if you think you're you're something being Facebook famous, well, I gotta here see here's the hand of Monopoly money. See where that gets. You. <laughs> yeah, because so, it doesn't mean nothing. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean nothing. You know, yeah. it's it's just something I'm good at, and some people you know like my work. Uh, Would you call it passion? It, it is. It, it, it's a craft. It, it, it's it's a, it's a passionate craft. You have to have, um, and, and it, you have to have patience. That's the one thing that 
Chase is going to learn and most people need to learn is you can't rush it. You mean patience in 2020? <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, if you yeah. want to. Good luck. You're going you're gonna to learn. Yeah. You know? and, and that's the problem people don't have. And I run into it now. Where's my shield? Where's this? Where's that? Um, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get there. I understand, you know, but you got to have patience. Like, I, this doesn't take me, uh, you know, one day to do. It's, it's not silk screen. It's not, you know, encapsulated gold leaf slapped down on a piece of leather, and next thing you know, it's there in a week. That doesn't happen. And that's one of the cool things about this platform, that we can literally talk about what actually goes into this. And one of the things I'll tell you is that um, being able to see it firsthand today at your house, it's amazing what goes into this. And Chris and I were both talking out when we left we were on the way here about, did you realize like how much goes into this, you know, and the book you were showing us and we're going through the book of all these different fronts that you've made. And what people need to understand is each and every one of these things are made by hand, drawn by hand, and then put onto, you know, made to be a front and then you're hand painting every single one of these things. Yeah. So it's not just, it's not a computer program that you're, going on there with a computer program printing it out and that's it this is all hand drawn all handmade we saw it for our own, our own eyes in this book the catalog's amazing yeah, it, it's, it's an old school way of doing it um, I don't know if I could do it any other way I'm sure you can with the computer but I feel that would wouldn't it take away from what you're doing yeah, though? I mean, that, that would take away from the whole point of what you're doing it for yeah I, I enjoy the way I do it right. I enjoy the process it, you know again it takes me away from everything else that's going on I guess you could say in the world right now mm, especially now man. I, I can focus on on one thing uh, you know here's what the guy wants he gives me an idea I start putting it together I start drawing it you know sometimes it's a redraw sometimes it's you know an erase here and a mark there and I don't like the way that's set up and move things around and I can't see doing that with the computer because I don't have that hand control because it's, it's here it, it is it's, it's in, here it's in my head right. um, you know and, and i'll talk to chase and he's asking me questions well how do you do that like why does this look that way and i tell him the biggest thing i tell him is i see things backwards it's not that i'm dyslexic or anything but when i look at something that's painted i don't see it at face value in i see it from the back forward it comes to me wow. so how do i have to bring that from the background forward so that it looks the way it's supposed to look. I, I don't a, see it. That's crazy. I don't see it the way everybody is. When I see a sign or I see a picture painting, I look at it differently. My brain already is processing how was that created? How do, can I recreate that? And what were the steps in that process? That's pretty cool. That's why you're an artist and I'm not <laughs> because I wouldn't even think that. I'd be like, yeah, that's cool. Because he'll bring me stuff and I'll <laughs> say, well, I, here, I did this and I went that. I went, uh, you should have started this way. Maybe you should have started with a shadow first and then brought it forward. Oh, wow. Because now your line isn't going to be as clear because it's, it's, you're, you're trying to force it in rather than bringing, bringing it out. It, it makes a lot of sense. It's weird yeah. how... No, it, makes a lot of, it actually makes a lot of sense. I, yeah. I totally understand what you're saying. I mean, it's, it's cool. So, like, my vision of everything is, is almost in a reverse. Yeah. I want to see my background first and bring it forward. That's awesome. And, and so, do you have people come to you and they have no idea what they want and they just say, make it happen and give you a blank canvas? I, I've had that, you know, I've had people say, or just give me a minimal, like, here's, I need, you know, I need chief. I'm thinking bugles, I'm thinking a number, and I'm thinking my name or the company name at the bottom. Great. So that gives you some artistic flexibility where you can kind of do your own thing. Are those you, are those more fun for you? Because That's more fun, and, and that I enjoy the most because I can get to keep it simple. Sometimes it's a little frustrating when somebody gives you, you know, 10 different things that they want to put on it. Okay, these things are six and a quarter inches. It's, that, that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's not. A, can, it's not a canvas. You know, know, I want you know the company patch, and I want my name, and I want the company name, and I want you know this title, and I want these years of service. And you're like, this isn't a mural. Yeah. You know, you're you're you're, you're taking something, and you're, you just keep compressing and compressing it until. And it has no detail. Yeah, you're kind right. of drawing drawing out like something like ah, this is gonna, you know, it's kind of gonna suck. What yeah. Are you gonna do. But what? yeah, they're paying for it. <laughs> so so now the chase is involved in all this um you said you're starting them out slow and, and, and small what what's been the most impressive things he's done so far uh logos uh he's had a few companies come to him within the fire services hey can you create my logo and that's good because they're not forcing him to put in you know 
like I said, these names and all these other different details, just the logo itself, like, like just like a fire department, your patch is your representation. That's your pride. That's who you represent. Well, that's the same thing with, with a, you know, you, I see here there's flow and vent on that helmet. That's their logo. That's their pride. You know, and when they take that and bring it to you and say, now put this on a helmet shield for me and recreate that, and you do, and, and him being in the age that he is, 13 years old, and with the talent that he's developed and developing, that's impressive to me. Like, I don't know if, if I would have had the courage to do that at 13. Right. Especially because, like you just said, and I'm so happy you said that, the logo means a lot to people. I mean, that's everything. You know, yeah. I know my logo means a great deal to me. Right. And, it's, and, and that's exactly what you're talking about. So you're right. At age 13, that's pretty impressive. Right. And, and you know, it, it's pretty cool. He, he does it. He's had a few that come through, and uh, and he's had a couple of, you know, few that return and, you know, or said, Hey, now my buddy has this business. Can you do this? Can you, and word of mouth is the absolute best word. That's the best way you can ever get business yeah. ever. And, 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 you know, he has the art, he has an art talent. He always kind of did as a kid. He, he, uh, I have pictures of him maybe at age six or seven, taking those books that I had, taking out my drawings and then taking bits and pieces and creating his own at that young age, just tracing you know, with a pencil learning that that hand control that wrist control that the flow of movement and, and like that's that's something you can't teach as far as i'm concerned you have to have the ability to learn but you also have to have a a, a god-given talent and drive you know it, I, yeah. to develop and yeah. it's it's like like when I, I brought up matt who was was one of my first uh helmet shields i look back at it and even some that i looked at I've probably been doing it since 2001. Like, I look at, oh, my God, they're so bad. But it's it's not that they were bad. They were good at the time. And it's how I have developed as right. a person and as the art has developed and some of the risks that maybe, you know, I'm going to try doing this and see if this works. And developing a new style, developing a new uh, paint scheme or, or a shadowing technique or an outlining ability or color combos, sometimes you got to step out of your comfort zone. And, and if you, just like the fire service. You know, I don't want things to change, but yet I don't want them to stay the same. Right. So something's got to happen. Something's got to happen. Right. Here. right. You know, if I stay stagnant with doing it the way that I do it, yeah, I'm going to have, you know, a cookie cutter shield and, and a basic, um, you know, that, that's going to be it. That's all you're going to be known for. I try to do things. Like push that envelope, right? Yeah. Every time a little like, bit more and more. I try to make things like I, I, I know my work. Uh, when I see my work, you know, I, I, I respect the heck out of Bob Stella. He's another guy who does it like I do old school, been doing it since, since 88. And like, he's the master. And, uh, I look at his stuff. And as soon as I see a Bob Stella shield, I know a Bob Stella shield. He's got his technique. He's got his stuff down and I know it. There was Bob, uh, Joe Kelly before me. Um, I see his stuff. Uh, I got lucky, you know, his daughter actually found me through Facebook and, uh, got talking to her. She was able to get me one of his old uh, patterns, which I framed and That's have so cool, yeah. hanging in my office. I, you know, I, I, I made a friendship with Bob Stella, and I was able to get some of his patterns framed and hanging in my paint office. It's to me, it's that history that I don't want lost. You, you know, uh, my son someday he'll have this stuff from right. those guys, and maybe from me, and from you, and he can hang it and onto, from you. onto his wall. Yeah, not maybe. Else, and whoever else comes along, like, right. You know, it, there's there's a lot of guys that have done it. And I'm sure I've missed people who have. I'm not the only guy who's ever done this, but there's just some people who have a knack for it. You know, I can remember being a kid coming through here, like you said. You know, you get involved with the fire department when you're younger, and I can remember uh, my cousin having a birthday party, and uh, I don't know if it was his 30th, his 20th, whatever it was, but I remember the birthday party, and the one gift he got was a Joe Kelly shield because he was the chief at the time. Oh, that's and awesome. I was like, wow. That's cool. <laughs> you know, how did yeah. they do that? Like, my brain was already going then. Right. Not so much in the fire department, but now it's, it's okay, fire department and art, there's there's something I can put together here. Like, right. So, like, the brain kind of came together and starts to work and, and how you do things. And, uh, you know, that you start to see that work and you start to know and learn who's doing what, how they're doing it, whose work is what. And... You know, that's that's my goal is to to make my own statement, to find my own niche, I guess you would say, my, my own feature of my work. It's my work. You know, that's Bob Stella. That's Joe Kelly. That's Mike Soma. And, and to know all these guys 
and and have that camaraderie. It's almost like it's another version of the fire department. Absolutely, and the, and the fact that people in the industry know who you are, a lot of firefighters throughout the U.S. know who you are, and I saw, you know, you didn't have to tell me you weren't bragging or, or gloating. You were. I just saw for myself the shield, you know, the, the fronts and where they were coming from, so I know it's east to west, north to south. It's not just local people looking for fronts. You're, you're getting your name out there, and it's, it's pretty cool. And, and that's, you know, I don't need some notoriety. I don't need to... I'm just there to, to paint the shield, man. Like, I, I just, I like doing it. It's interesting to see where I can send them, you know, who wants them. You know, I've, I've shift, shipped from coast to coast, and, you know, I, I've done everything from uh, gold leaf to silver leaf to uh, uh, hand-painted to, you know, the only thing I've never done is carved. I thought about it, but I'm like, yeah, I'm sticking, you know, I'm going to stay in my comfort zone. Right. I'm happy where I'm at. You want to stay in your lane? Stay in there. There's a lot of guys <laughs> who do that, and I, I love some of that stuff. I mean, there's some guys who do amazing stuff with carved shields, but I'm like, I, I don't need to get down that road. I'm busy enough with doing this. Staying in my lane, bro. I'm happy where I'm at. What's what? You're humble. I like that. What what would you say your most notable front was? My my most most notable, I guess, one that that popped up a lot, and it was uh, Jeff Skullmiller out of uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, the guys came to me and said, "Hey, you know, Jeff's getting promoted to lieutenant. Um, his nickname Skull. We want to put a skull on there. Uh, free reign." do what you want with it blank canvas you know so as long as there was a skull and you know there was a, a spider web with a with a spider on it you know whatever the significance is they that's the only thing i had to have so did you like sit there put headphones on put the monster mash on give yourself some I, <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it's one of those things actually i ended up drawing that twice i had a, a more of a uh, realistic sketch version i sent that out and they're like eh. You know, the spider web in the background, like the, it's cool, but it's kind of not what we're looking for, and that's great. I, I'm I'm okay with people telling me I like it, but I don't like it. Right, because at the end, the Fine. final product, you want them to be happy. Right, I'm not wearing this. You are. Right. So if you don't like what I'm putting together, tell me that, because I don't want to hear later on, oh, I liked crap. it, but yeah. yeah, you know, this is crap. It's not what I expected. Well, tell me what you want. You know, let's make the chance. Why well, always draw it first? Here's an idea. You know, it, it's you're not going to see it in color. But you're going to see the sketch. You're going to see the layout. You're going to see how the, the wording lays, the shadowing, whatever we're putting on it. You, you get an idea. And if you some, somebody doesn't like something, and I've had that, and it's okay, tell me. Where are we changing? Where am I going? You know, what am I tweaking? I'd rather do it now in pencil and redraw something or start all over than have, like, halfway through a shield or getting it done and say, I don't know if I like that. Yeah, the last thing you want. You know, Here, let me take this and throw it away. And yeah, this is the last thing you want is someone, you know, a product out there that you're that they're not happy with, right? Especially because you fix that if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. that's that's a good fix thing. It now and then, you know, we move forward. And, and you know, and you don't have to buy from me. Like right. I said, there's, I'm I'm just a small fish in a bigger pond. There's a lot of us out here that are doing it. Right. You know, and and you decide what you want. Do you want gold leaf? Do you want paint? Do you want a, a Will Belinsky shield? Do you want a Bob Stella shield? Do you want Mike Soma? The, the list goes on and on of guys that are doing, do you want something that's carved? Do you want something that's, you know, something that's old school and, you know, you know, and it all comes down to like, what's your, what's your, uh, what's your dollar range? Like, what are you willing to, to part with? You, you know, I'm not cheap. You know, but, none of us are, it doesn't come cheap. Right. And, the reason it doesn't come cheap is because what, like I said before, this isn't getting printed on a computer. Right. This is coming from, you know, this is a skill. It's a craft. Right. So you're paying for that. A lot of times, a lot of these guys, especially when you're getting up into the positions of chief, assistant chief, captain, and so on and so forth, it's it's a memory in your career. So when you take that off your helmet, you want to put that somewhere up on the mantle, on a plaque, mm -hmm. you know, on that helmet, put it on the wall, uh, and say, you know, I remember that time. That that was that important part of my life. But that was a good right. time. You know, that, right. those were those were good years. That, that was. You know, I can remember that fire. I remember that mark in it. I remember that, you know, it got singed here. It got darkened up there. It got, you know, maybe some paint chipped off from this where, you know, you can get some of these shields and they might see a little heat. And then, yep. know, so, you know, it's like a shrinky dink and it's, well, why'd that happen? I've gotten out. Why are these, these tunnels and these runs in there? Because that ain't gold leaf, fella. You know, <laughs> you're going to find that out. It, you know, you have gold leaf. It's actual gold. It's actual metal. And at times it will reflect heat. It's crazy to think about, but it does. I've seen what heat can do to these things. And you'll see, like, maybe where the uh, the paint is, it'll 
it'll darken down or, or blotten out more, but you'll see that the gold is still there. Wow. It, it, so it, it has its own advantage, and like anything else, you know, it's it's it'll burn, but it may not burn the way everything else is burning around it. You know, you can put a piece of leather on your helmet. I've seen these things, they're burned up to, to a crisp, and you can barely read them. But that happens. Yeah, you, you know, absolutely. It, everything's different, but that's that's the, the mark of, the, of, of what you've done, you know, what you've been through, I guess you could say. That's your salt, look at that term. I know it's a bad term right now in the service. That's right. salt on it. Throw some salt on it. Salt that's fixes it. everything. <laughs> <laughs> so b- before I let you off the hook here, um, what, what would you say – the most important thing for you is right now in what you're doing. Is there one thing that you'd look in, in the horizons for you as far as what you're doing? or? Um, yeah. Uh, to me, this is practice for later on in, in my life. Uh, I, I plan on um, retiring from my, my job, and this may be something I become more heavily involved in than what I am right now. It, it, it's tough trying to balance uh, a regular job volunteer fire department wife and family kids growing up um, I have two sons Chase is my oldest he's 13 and I have another one right behind him Cole who's 8 so right. you know he's you know again I don't push my kids into this if they want to do it great if right. they don't want to do it I'm fine with that too it's good that they, you allow them to you know find your own way just like you yeah. did your dad did with you you know and, and that's that's going to be the, the biggest thing like, find your way Right. Do your thing. You know, find your passion. It may not be fire department. It may not be art. It may, you know, it could be computers. It, it could be woodworking. It could be, you know, I, maybe money management. Great. Go for it. You know, but whatever you, you have a passion in, try it. Right. Learn it. Do it. And if if it works, it works. That's if awesome. If it doesn't, you don't have that regret of saying, I could have, should have, maybe if I tried, maybe... You don't know if you don't try. Yeah. The biggest success is failure. Absolutely. You have to fail. Before you have to you fall on your face a few times in life before you can finally you, figure it out. You, you got to fail before you, you can succeed. Absolutely. And, and that's that's the biggest thing is don't be afraid to fail. It's okay to fail. It's to learn from that failure and move forward. Last question is, is there one person in the fire service that was a mentor for you, someone that you remember inspired you, motivated you, and wanted to push you up? Is there, an, is there that one person, or would you say collectively as a fire company that that happened? I could say collectively as the company, but, you know, you always go back to your family. You know, uh, my dad being the first, uh, I have cousins in the department, uh, family, and, and technically it's all family. I mean, once, you, once you're in. It's a great answer. You, you all become family, mm-hmm. you know. We're there for each other. Um, we just had a guy last year went through a health battle, and we all rallied together. You know, it, it was, it's one big family, mm-hmm. and that's the way you got to look at it. You know, when our community's in trouble, we're there. And when we're in trouble, we're there for each other. So, and that's the way it should be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, listen, I really appreciate you coming on the show. It was great to talk to you, learn more about, you know, the fronts. Because I, I always thought they were cool, but I had no idea what actually goes into them, especially knowing now after seeing your portfolio and your book, how they're, each one is hand-painted. And, and that, to me, is just, it's awesome. You know, it, it, I think what you're doing is really cool. And I can't wait to show our guests or our viewers all more and more that you, you do. Cool. And getting Lisa to know who you are, you know, the, the man behind the mask. <laughs> <laughs> the man behind the pain, I guess yeah. you would say. It's not, I'm happy with that. That's fine. That's good. So here we are in Dixon City, Pennsylvania. Again, I appreciate you coming on the show. And uh, you're going to get to see some of these fronts. We're going to put them out there so you can see them on the show. And there we are, episode 36, in the books, Dixon City, PA.